In 1963, July, on a family trip, I was bored out of my mind, as, as a kid 12 years old will be, and read Fantastic Four Annual Number One. For some reason, it just hit home that people got paid doing comic books, and I wanted that job. DC had started work on a book called The Black Bomber, which was quite possibly the most offensive comic book ever created. The Black Bomber was a white racist who took part in chemical camouflage experiments in Vietnam designed to help him blend into the jungle better. When he came back to America, in times of stress, he would turn into a black superhero. DC asked me to rewrite them to make them better and then take over the book with the third issue. I refuse to do this. I tell them you cannot publish this. Said, what do you mean? We paid for two scripts. I said, no, you can't publish this. This is offensive. People will come to your offices with torches. And they go, how do you know that? And I go, because I'll be leading them. And we went back and forth for about a week. And finally, I, I managed to get the argument down to one question. Do you really want DC's first major black character to be a white racist? So I said, give me a few weeks and I will create an entirely new character. I had worked on black heroes at Marvel. I had done Luke Cage, who I loved, but unjustly convicted or not, he was an ex-con. The Black Panther was a great character, but he was an African king. Bill Foster, who became Black Goliath, was a scientist and the living mummy was black but nobody knew it because he was wrapped in bandages. None of these characters seemed to me to be really something a young kid could relate to. And then it came up to me that every kid knows what a teacher is. Every kid's had a teacher. And this was about the same time as Welcome Back, Cotter. Welcome back. So I came up with the idea, you know, an Olympic athlete coming back to the school that he went to as a teacher, you know, and that was obviously ripped off from Welcome Back, Cotter, except for the Olympic athlete part. And I was trying to come up with a superhero identity, and I'm wandering through the offices, and I see a Wonder Woman cover on Julie Schwartz's wall. I think it was just a rough sketch at this point with some copy on it. And it's Wonder Woman standing on her robot plane, uh, lassoing a black lightning bolt, and saying, because, you know, you have to explain this stuff, saying, Hera, help me stop this black lightning bolt from destroying this city. And I'm thinking, black lightning, that's pretty catchy. So, really just a day or so before my pitch meeting to DC, I came up with the idea of making Jefferson Pierce black lightning and having electrical powers. Uh, but everything about Jefferson Pierce was already in place before I came up with the powers and the superhero name. I'm 47 now, so I've been a fan of comics, I would probably say since the mid-70s, probably was like five or six. And back then it was uh, Batman, Superman, and I remember Black Lightning came out in 1977, around April sometime, I was seven years old, and I actually picked up the comic book at a candy store. And I was intrigued, I was excited, it was a pretty cool comic and a cool character. It was more, I guess you could say, street scenes. It was a different style compared to the gentleman who wrote for Superman or for Batman. And the powers were pretty unique, nobody that I, that I could recall had those same kind of powers. You know, times were changed, and it, that character changed along with that time. I hope that he becomes like a, an A-gamer, like, like Superman, Batman, on that same type of level. I hope he gets more recognized and more, he'll be doing more crossovers in comic books throughout the DC universe. Black Lightning was a great character, and he still is, and I'm really, you know, again, I'm psyched that he's getting a TV show. Black Lightning. Black Lightning. Black Lightning, a DC comic property initially developed for Fox, will now go into pilot production over at the CW. One of the things I like about what I know about the TV series, not all of which I can say due to non-disclosure agreements, is that while I like all of the CW shows, and they're all edgy, but they're fantasy edgy, Black Lightning is real world edgy. As you've seen in the trailer, he gets pulled over for the cops for driving while black. There are modern day issues being addressed in Black Lightning. 
And since that was something I did in my 90s series, and I'm doing in my current series, that's my big hope, that people will realize that you can do exciting superhero stories in a real world setting. My favorite superheroes have always been those that have done the fantastic superhero stuff, but kept the real stuff real. And that's my hope for Black Lightning. You know, I hope that it leads the way to more TV shows starring diverse heroes. Marvel does a great book called Ms. Marvel, uh, a Muslim teenager. I'd love to see that on TV. I'd love to see a superhero TV series with a gay lead or a trans lead or any number of things. I mean, diversity is really important to me, and I define diversity as if there are people reading our comics, they should be able to see themselves in our comics. Not everyone in one comic book, because then you wouldn't have room for an actual story, but yeah, they should be able to see themselves. And it's very important to me, and every time we take a step in that direction, I think it's a good thing. The fact that one of those steps is the character I love more than any other character I've ever worked with is a bonus.